We just finished insulating this entire van. Here's how it all went down. This is the good life. Now, I know what you're thinking. This is a completely different van. No, it's actually not. It is the same exact van, just with a freaking kick-ass paint job, sort of, and a grill conversion. We didn't include this in the 30-day van build because it is not something that is essential for you to do when you're doing a van build. We'll give you guys an inside look on how we did this paint job, the whole process and all that, at the end of this series, so make sure to stick around for that. But for right now, it's time to install some insulation. All right, guys, before we can consider doing anything in here, we would have to take care of any rust that's showing and bare metal. We're going to hit it with this palm sander, and then we're going to put some uh, 415 rust preventive on it. And then from there, we can start building up. Stubborn spots where you got this little angle grinder. Okay, so we just finished doing the sanding of all the rust spots, doing our best to take some of the rust out as well as get all the paint flakes. We used the 80 on the sander, then we used the angle grinder to get tighter spots that we couldn't really reach. Okay. <laughs> Now we're going to wipe all of the rusty areas and everything that we want to paint with the Pour 15. Make sure you get the dirtiest rag you could find in. We just washed these by a generous amount. Oh my goodness. This little area didn't get cleaned up that well, but it's okay. I think uh, the Pour 15 can be applied over rust. Yeah, paint over rust. For some reason, I always get the gloves when my hands are all sticky and I can't get them on. Actually, this one kind of went on pretty easy, so I'm just gonna probably cut that out. Is that enough? Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah, absorb all that. There you go. Give it a nice rub a dub. A little hack. Drill a hole, stick the screw in there, and that's where you pour in and out. Because they say once you take off the lid, you'll never be able to take it back off after you use it. This Pour 15 stuff is supposed to be top notch for any rust on trailers, RVs, cars. Metals. Yeah, pretty much any metal. It's supposed to do the trick. Put it on there, nice and heavy. I brought two brushes, you can help. Just finished doing the first coat of the Pour 15. Got a good, nice layer on there. We're gonna do two coats. It took us about 20 minutes to get from one side to the next, so we're gonna give it about another 10, 15 minutes, and then we're gonna start again from the beginning and coat everything else for the second coat. The first coat goes on a little light, but then when you put the second coat, you can see that everything is so covered. So smooth. Slight change of plans. So in between the first and the second coat, what we're gonna do is there's a bunch of holes on our floor for some odd reason. We obviously don't want the random holes down there, so we're gonna fill them up with some Sigaflex 221. That way, the second coat of the Pour 15 will go over and kind of like encrust it all together. And you're just doing heaping blobs, I see? I have think so. This stuff does dry exactly how you like leave it. So if you leave it like with a big clump, it's gonna dry like that, like a rubbery kind of. Yeah, so if it's somewhere that you want it smoothed out, like make sure you smooth it out while it's still wet, because if not, good luck. All right. 
Let's get the painting. For a little Home Depot run, we have got to get all the stuff for the installation. In that's a tricky one, huh? Installation, installation. For the installation of the installation. We all fall down. We get banged up, but the scars show. So we're looking for just normal plywood, right? Three quarter inch. What? Sanded plywood. Normal sanded plywood, three quarter inch as a subfloor that's gonna go over the insulation. And look at all this expensive ass wood. There it is. So when we originally found the mushrooms on the subfloor last episode, we knew off the bat that we were going to be wanting to replace it. However, wood has gotten pretty expensive. Got a real good feeling. Got a real good feeling. Like there is lightning deep in my bones. Got a real good feeling. That is some real expensive subfloor. Freaking mushrooms. Got a real good feeling. make sure you don't have any like crazy warps in it because then you'll have wood like this and that's not gonna help it's gonna you be out. harder to glue it up later it's gonna be harder just to work with in general well the other things are closed so unless you have a knife I'm not gonna chew through with my teeth That was a more expensive trip to Home Depot than we anticipated, but we got the goods. We are prepped and ready for tomorrow to get, yeah, get to installing. Uh, it's still kind of early, but it's already dark here. You know, the time change and all that stuff. So that's going to be it for day two. And uh, see you guys in the morning. It is day three. It is starting to rain, so we have to move pretty fast today, but we're hoping to get the kill mat down, the insulation in, possibly the subfloor cut we're not sure we have a lot of work to do a lot of wood to prime but let's get to it we're going to be doing strips of wood parallel to each other across like this i got it i got it it's perfect <laughs> it's perfect one down a billion to go Now that we have the sizes and the approximate location of where they're going to go, we know we are good to go with primering them, which we're going to use that kills all purpose. We have all the pieces laid out here. We kind of left them in the order so that we don't forget which one goes where, although a lot of them are the same size, but you know. Basically, we're going to go ahead and paint the tops, the sides, and then once this kind of dries, we're going to flip it over into the other side. The reason that we're putting the sealant is because we don't want moisture to get into the wood and then cause it to expand or damage like the floor. I don't know. You know? But we're sealing it to be safe. Why are you sanding the edges? Just to make it nice and clean. Oh my goodness. That's right, I got it. You're doing a great job. Check out who it is. Hi, Cora. <laughs> oh my God, he's so fluffy. We got a nice uh, little coat of the Kills Primer onto our little panels. While that dries, we're gonna go ahead and install some kill mat. We got the kill mat from Amazon. I'll drop links down below to everything that we got. We actually bought two just in case, but we think we'll be okay with one since there's a lot of like little pieces already in here. But let's go ahead and open this up. Oh, 
Oh, they're not that thick. We're gonna be trying to put it on with this roller that we picked up yesterday at Home Depot. Pop a bottle, about to make it rain. Let me give you something now to celebrate. Come on, I just feel so good, good, good. Oh, I just feel so good, good, good. Oh, I just feel so good, good, good. Very tired, you know. Woo! Exhausted already. found the right use for this roller. Ah, yeah. It's a real good job of getting those knots out. That feels nice. Who needs to go? Oh! I see the world through my thrift store shapes, rose colored lenses and a fake gold frame. Come on. putting the kill mat in we ended up only using one box we also used this little nifty tool a little wood scraper it really helped to get in the crevices and put some pressure down wheel wells we kind of did a little thing there we also wanted to make sure that you know where we're driving has some sound editing that's pretty much it and the inside uh you think the woods are dry uh out. yeah dry enough Pardon the noise, apparently the neighbors are building a house over there. It's time to glue these guys down. And we're gonna be using some... 3M5200. Yeah, I don't know, some adhesive sealant. I've used this for marine applications before and it's some uh, really good stuff. Oh uh, yeah, foreign workout. Oh, it's thick, thick, huh? Nice. Feel it just dance along. Keep the feeling going on and on. If you feel it just dance along, dance along, dance along. Yeah. If you feel it just dance along, got to keep the feeling going on. I think it's a bit overkill, but I guess. We're running out of everything. We left some heavy stuff on top of the one by twos. You don't want the 5200 to dry up and the board is not even in it at all. So that's it's useless. We have all these one by two runners in and glued down. This stuff doesn't really cure for like 48 hours to seven days or something like that. I think it's Cook time for a quick lunch. little lunch break and the, and then we'll be back and it's time for wool. Hey. Wool, wool. So the other day we were prepping the van for paint when all of a sudden, FedEx, come on, you see this big van right here? I know you got something for me. Oh, he's got something for me. Ooh, looks like we got our wool. Thanks. Yeah. Woo! But wait, there's more. Not one, but two. This is huge. Bad guys guy's probably watching me like, what the heck is this girl doing? We are super excited to announce that this video is sponsored by Havelock Wool, an industry leader when it comes to van life installation. I mean, the bag literally says designed for van lifers. You get a lot of added benefits with the wool, such as moisture management, cleaner air, sound absorption, it's fire resistant. Uh, it's all natural. All it comes natural. from sheep from New Zealand. And we get a New Zealand part in the van, which it is super cool. It like smells like a petting zoo. Supposedly that goes away though. Oh man. <laughs> Jason likes the petting zoo smell. And it also doesn't off gas any chemicals because there's no chemicals. It's a natural wool, like. Right, like the polyisoboard, you'd have to cut a little piece for the window and then fill all the gaps with the foam and you want to be living with that. One of the final reasons we decided to go with Havelock Wool is because of the sound absorption qualities. It deadens 90 to 95% of the airborne sound, which that on top of the pieces of kill mat that we just put, and then on top of the, the wood. Uh, it should be soundproof. They also have a really great website with a bunch of frequently asked questions. Their customer service is great, and there's even a chart so that way you know exactly how many bags of insulation you need for your specific build size. All right, you ready to start What's installing that? or what? For real? <laughs> Let's go. So we basically laid out some sheets of the wool here and we're gonna go ahead and start putting them in. We know we're going to want to stuff these main parts first, and then we'll do the side panels. We've got some cool little twine that we bought yesterday that we're gonna use to kind of try and zigzag it to hold it up. Pretty much, we're uh, just gonna go ahead and stuff this stuff in here. 
just like that, we have our first piece of insulation in. All right, let's kick it in high gear. Jason did a mighty fine job over on this side, huh? All right, we're gonna move down here, but we're gonna double fold it, right? Yeah, we're gonna, because this cavity is a lot bigger than the one up top, I've seen this. We folded one whole piece in half, so that way we'd get a double in here, and we're cutting off this little bit here, because it's a little bit too big, but that piece we're going to send down into here. You feel it yet? There it is, I see it popping out through the hole. I got it right here. Yay! All right, so that's gonna be our plan of attack for the rest of these bottom ones. I'm trying to get it into these little crevices here, but my hand can only go so far and I'm getting all cut up. So we got a little tool here, to kind of stick it through and work it through and look at it popping out over here. We're gonna stuff those at the end once we make sure that we have enough for everything else. looking pretty good very wooly. very wooly we got our twine here and jason has like a coat hanger making a little hook so basically what we're going to try to do is run the string across into this hole and then with that coat hanger we'll be able to attach it there and pull it out here and then kind of just go crisscrossy to be able to hold it onto the wall That's we theory. yeah we hope oh there's one you got it I'll hold this. We go in that one and out of this one. And then somewhere in the here. midway, we could cut it and tie. And through here. Yeah. Right, but then there's gonna be too much string, right. so you, have to cut you, it, you, you do it so. This, you can't put this ball through here. Right, but you could also get a bunch of string that would make it. Jeez, ah! getting old. My birthday's tomorrow. Yep. You need such a big coat hanger? This is how they come. There it is. Hey, and we got string on this side. All the way out. For Jason, what happened? Oh my goodness, this was supposed to be like a couple pieces. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like one of those things you do with your hand, the you know, the things with the strings. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Guys, it was not supposed to come out like this. It's gonna hold the wool, but it kept snapping on us, so we had to tie it a couple times. Hello. For the most part, it held in there. There's some extra space on the side here, but when we're putting the wood on the on the wall, then we'll just stuff that in there, like right at the end, because right now it would just obviously fall. So uh, let's move to this this wall over here. Second run of it. Looks a little bit cleaner. This one came out good. That's gonna be it for day three because the sun is going down and we don't really wanna install wool in the dark. Figured we're gonna give this a little bit of time to cure so that way we can take all this stuff out of the way and put the wool down nicely. And then we also have to do the top. We will see you guys in day four. Later. What's going on guys? Welcome back to day four of the 30 day van build. We're almost out of time and we're still on the insulation. This is crazy. But today we are hopeful that we are going to finish the insulation and potentially even get the subfloor in. Moment of truth. Well, don't rip them off. I think we're good to go. All right, it's time to take all of this out of here. Show me sorrow, show me laughter. Show me starlight, show that me is a whole have. lot of stuff. Now that everything's good to go, we are going to go ahead and start putting our twine through these little holes is what we're kind of going to try to do. And that way we'll create like little loops. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Breath in our lungs, beat in our hearts. You got something to say. It's a brand new day. All 
the strings are hung, that's gonna be a good starting point for us. We're gonna go ahead and start putting in the wool. That's a lot of wool. We have just finished with the ceiling. For the most part, the twine held it together on the edges. We put tape just so that way it doesn't like hang and droop down. It's time to finally move on to the floor. Jason's gonna blow everything out to make sure we're not just covering a bunch of crap underneath, and then we're gonna lay it down. Head flying in the clouds. It's just the little things. All of the little things. Hands up in the sky. It's all gonna be alright. insulation on the floor it was so easy to install it literally took us like 15 minutes there was only like tucking your bed yeah it was making literally your bed. making your bed now comes the fun part now that the insulation is done we have to figure out how to get this sub My favorite in. place to be is right here not thinking out what brings me down yeah my favorite way to be without fear is in the now I'm learning how Fast like no thanks, no I'm Doing just fine One foot and another Floating, enjoying my freedom Singing off key I like it better when I'm under the sun Ooh -hoo, ooh -hoo, ooh -hoo. We got our sub floor in now we gotta take it all out to paint it, but it's in. We did a 48 sheet here. Then we did another one here. This area, we figured we'd do the split since it's gonna be the most probably unseen area. That way we have one solid piece at the garage area. What do you think, Jason? I'm hungry. Yeah. All right. We got a nice looking little paint station set up here. Station one, station two, station three, and station four. You want help? No, you got it. <laughs> I guess I can help you. Oh, it's so blessed in my eye. We're going to be using the same marine adhesive, the 5200, and we're going to drop a couple dots on the runners as well as nail them down. Right now, Jason is making markings where the runners go, so we try to make sure to keep the wool off of the runners as much as possible so that the uh, sub floor will lay flat. Jason's gonna come and put the 5200 drops now. We have got sub floor. We brought a lot of light because we want to get it painted and wrap this up already. Alright guys, that's going to wrap it up for this episode of the 30 Day Van Build. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. We got the insulation done. We got the subfloor done. It's laid out. It's already transforming crazy links to everything that we use will be down in the description below make sure you check it out check out havelock wool subscribe and turn those notifications on because there's new build videos of the 30 day van build every single sunday also if you guys subscribe share this video and comment when you're done we're going to be picking somebody and giving them a paperback version of van life in 50 states so make sure to share this video comment and subscribe all right that's gonna be it for this one we'll see you guys in the next one later Next time on the 30 Day Van Build. Got these blacked out fans though. They look nice. Hey, hi. <laughs> I think we don't care so much this time. <laughs> or just like send it. <laughs>